My favorite hand of this whole series is coming up on table three. The player with the 92 VPIP limps under the gun and I pop it up for value with 10-9 suited to 3x. Basically 3x is all I need to ensure that I have a continuation bet with fold equity. It's all I need to ensure that, like I build a pot that if I flop a value hand, I can continue to build against the fish's stack size. And the big blind's 11-8, so I don't need to make it like 250 here to ensure that he folds. He's gonna fold to 150 the same amount as he is to the larger size. So 150 is the biggest I need to make it to accomplish like everything I'm trying to accomplish. And actually, uh, we'll see that making 150 ends up being pretty prudent because uh, if I made it bigger, the fish ostensibly would have limped re-raised bigger. So indeed, he min limp re-raises, and I have a really easy call here. Like, I'm never folding 10 nine suited to a 92, whatever he is. There's just no reason to ever fold in this spot. Depending, like, what kind of game you're playing, you can just call here for straight value. So to try and flop a pair or better, and to hold on or put some money in, you'll see I do something a bit more creative. So even if this is just a pot odds call, like against a 92 V pit player, I think like every card runners player should be making this call. I don't think it's very close at all. So I call and we flop really well. We flop a gut shot with two overs and a backdoor flush draw. And he C bets three dollars into five twenty five. And I think I don't want to check raise get it in here though that's definitely an option because with our backdoor flush draw and everything like I think we have plenty of equity but I actually want to check call here out position with the idea that like I have all options available to me so I can lead the turn if I like it and I can lead fold or check raise call or bet three bet like I can check call again I'm uh, definitely open to all possibilities on the turn the turn is a blank so my plan here is to check raise all in and he insta checks back the deuce so I river top pair and I <laughs> I basically consider it the nut so what I want to do is I want to get value because I have the nuts and I decide to over bet for value because I don't think a player playing 92% of hands even though it's over 12 hands I don't think a player playing this way is going to make a huge distinction between $9 and $14 so I think his calling range is what we call in the last it's not going to be relative to my size almost whatsoever so I might as well make it $14 because I would prefer $14 to 10 I could buy more at McDonald's with 14 And he does an amazing thing, which is raise all in for 12 and a half more dollars. So I don't really, I mean, I don't see how I could fold. I'd put in all this money, right? But he raised all in pretty quick. Again, like he's playing 92% of hand. So, I mean, if he has like four or five or seven, nine, like he has, he has it, but I don't know anything about him, and he's not the standard 50 and L player whose river raises mean the absolute nuts. That's not the situation that we're in. We're in a really non-standard situation where I made an overbet that most players, even players who don't even know what the word polarized means, like are going to understand that it's a polarizing bet size 14 into less than 11. He's going to have no idea what that means. This could be anything. <laughs> who knows what he's thinking, right? So I'm just not going to fold for uh, the price I'm getting. I think it's pretty clear that check calling the flop was the profitable choice. If I can get a 50 big blinds in over 50 big blinds in on the river when I have top pair no kicker and I'm good calling pre and everything else all those are definitely good decisions I really like my line like there are two possibilities one is that my over bet induced him to bluff shove with no fold equity which obviously would be a great result but the other option is that he had decided to shove on the river no matter what so he didn't even look at the $14 he just saw I bet and it's like I'm shoving all in to win this pot or you know his wife walked in and his mistress was on the bed or something he had to go like who knows what these players are doing but I think once we bet we have to call and I like over betting for value there because like I said he has pocket fives he's not gonna really care between $8 and $14 like a regular player. Yeah, so I think $14 is a, is a really good uh, bet size there. And that's def definitely my favorite hand in this series.